give him some endless praise this morning? Yeah. Come on, get your feet moving a little bit. All right. Woohoo! We're here to celebrate you, Jesus.
ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips. Your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips. Your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips. Your praise will ever be. Your praise will ever be on my lips. 
We cannot be silent for the sake of the kingdom. We cannot be complacent for the sake of the kingdom. We cannot hold back our praise. We cannot hold back our worship. We cannot hold back our praise. Somebody Amen. join her. Join her up there dancing. I need to we see some more dancing. We pray for the breakthrough. Oh, we pray for the breakthrough. Oh, we dance for the breakthrough. For the kingdom of heaven. We sing for the breakthrough. Oh, God. Let's shout Give for the breakthrough. You're so worthy. We so worthy. So exalted. The kingdom of heaven. Exalted. The kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. Exalted. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Worthy are you, Lord. We'll not hold back our praise. We'll not hold back worship to you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for deliverance. Deliverance of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Deliverance of the kingdom. For your name, Jesus. For your name, Jesus. For your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Worthy, 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 Lord. Worthy, 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 Lord. Hallelujah. So worthy. So worthy. Praise God. We take it by force of worship. Hallelujah. Force of praise. The force of praise. For deliverance. For deliverance. For deliverance. For deliverance. Hallelujah. Whatever wall you have in front of you, if you push, if you pray, if you worship, the wall will dissipate. The wall will dissipate. Hallelujah, we press, we press, we press, Lord. Hallelujah. Push. Woo. Come on, come on, come on, church. Come on, church, give him praise. He's worthy. He's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy. He's worthy. Oh.
your eyes. Lift their eyes to see. Oh, what are we going to see? Oh, your love crushing every night.
Oh, there's just a, a wonderful, wonderful spirit during this time of Florence. I'm real serious. I know some tragedy has happened. But it's just been a wonderful, wonderful thing of what God is doing in the earth. To just spiritually see what was happening and to watch it form out and to begin to come and, and to hear them begin to decree. Worst they've seen in many years. This was the worst hurricane supposedly since 1834. This was supposed to be the big Category 5 just wiping out. And I heard in the very beginning that even at TBN and up on the coast of Virginia, all of them, the intercessors begin to go out and to pray. And they begin to speak to it. And they begin to just pray and believe God. Oh, I know the world's laughing. That's okay. <laughs> they just think it's funny. Oh, it ain't funny. And I'm here to tell you that's been going on. And even my old uncle preacher, 93 years old, sitting right there on the water looking at it, laughing at it. He said with his own mouth, it's not going to hit no here no category five. When it gets to my house, it'll just be a storm. You'll see. I've lived through a ton of them, he said. Sure enough, I know it's wise maybe to get out, but you know, it's been pretty where he's at. Where he's sitting, he's still dry. He's still got power, and he's still doing good. And he said he's fine. He's 93. If it's time to go, he said, let's go. If it ain't, he said, let's get it on. So he's getting it on today. But the word Florence means prosperity. And when I heard that, I said, well, just come on, Florence. Somebody said, well, what if it pushes your condo over? <laughs> hey, wait till you see my new one. Glory be to God. We serve a God that restores everything. If something gets moved out of the way in God's kingdom, it's making room for more. Oh, yeah, it is. Always make room for more. That's just the way God is. That's the way he's moving, church. So I'm decreeing right now as it's raining. I see in the realm of the Spirit, when the rain of the Lord begins to come, you don't really have to go make anything happen. Just like water comes in people's houses and starts rising on its own, the waters of God. It'll just start going through the streets and the city. It'll go through the buildings and nobody can stop it. It'll be just like a tsunami and it'll just come in and touch everything that's there. That's the waters of God. They don't drown people. They save people. Somebody say amen. And I'm ready for the waters of God to begin to flow through this church and signs and wonders and miracles, even the mysteries of God to be unveiled and the joy of the Lord in our midst. Glory to God. Thank you, Father, for faith. Thank you that we can do it individually by ourselves at home with you and corporately when we all come together and release our faith and trust you and watch you move mightily. And oh, glory to God. Oh, are we loving it. And everybody saying, amen. Dolores, come on. You come do your job. Praise the Lord. Y'all be seated if you can. It's going to be a great, great day. Already is. You're looking good. Come on, Mama D. Glory. Amen. Praise God. Amen. We thank God. My name is Dolores McDowell. They didn't, they didn't give me no glory, but God, to God be the glory. Amen. Praise God. Anyway, hallelujah. I'm going to talk about giving today. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, no, let me do business first. Amen. I always remember Pastor Larry say, I get to heaven if, if I don't run past the gate, so I better slow down. I ain't worried about you going to heaven. I don't know what you're doing. Test, test. Glory. It's Sean. Okay. All right. The gap is... The monthly outreach to local elders for great, awesome people. Praise God. Jerisha, I, and many others go to different elderly places and bless. I'm going to say bless their socks out. Praise God. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. And we welcome online viewers. Good morning. Amen. Good morning. Yeah. I ain't going to say that. Amen. Praise God. And the missions this month is community outreach for special people events, fall fest, fire department, individual emergency situations. This fund is for standby all year. Praise God. Hallelujah. I've been out of I've been praising the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> 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 Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. That's a good thing. Praise God. But I'm talking a little bit about giving today. Praise God. The word says, give and it shall be given to you. Good measure. Press down. Shaking together and running over. Amen. So that's what we all want. Praise God. But we got to get to that uh, place. Amen. I'm going to give you two little things. Praise God. When I was growing up, uh, my mama used to give, I think she used to give all of us a quarter, praise God, to give, praise God, an offering, praise God. Sometimes mine got an offering, sometimes mine went to school with me the next day, got me some candy cookies or whatever, but praise God. Amen. I'm pretty sure y'all can relate to that, praise God. Amen. Yes. And then another story about giving, I got this one off the internet from Carice Florent, praise God. She said she, when she was a little girl, her mama used to give her two dimes, two dimes, right? So one day, praise God, she uh, lost one of the dimes, right? And she told God, oh God, I'm so sorry I lost your dime, praise God, because she kept the other dime for herself. Praise God. Can y'all relate to that? Praise God, amen. But well, we bless God. We thank God for him giving me a giving heart, praise God. I thank God I'm a giver, amen. I don't know about nobody else, but I'm a giver. Amen. Praise God. I got saved on a Saturday and uh, tied on the Sunday. Amen. I, I mean, it just in me because I was so stingy. When, but we, we don't even have to go there, but I was stingy. But I thank God. I thank God for the opportunity to give to Every good work, praise God, amen. amen. And I will say this, praise God, because it's true. Anybody that has been a part of my life, praise God, you've been blessed. I'm just telling you. I'm just saying I'm just, I'm just going to tell the truth. I'm just going to tell the truth, praise God. But I thank God for the opportunity to, to give, praise God. Amen. Y'all can stand up with me, but I'm going to have to decree it because I didn't get my confession up there in time for them to put it on the uh, string. Praise God. Well, are you, when I say it, y'all say it after me, okay? Okay. Decree with me. I choose to agree with God. Thank you, Lord. You have met all my needs. Now, I am so blessed. That I'm planting trees. That I'm planting trees. And not just planting seeds. Not just planting seeds. Praise God. And that, came, and that came from Clarice. Praise God. All right. You may be seated. Plant a tree instead of a seed. Hey, it's already grown when you get it stuck in the ground. Oh, yeah. Sister Dolores, I do believe she's going to make it to heaven if she just doesn't run by the gate. I love it. I'd rather be around fired up enthused people than I would a bunch of dead ones. How about you guys? Anytime, anytime, anytime. Oh, I love it. All right, everybody say salty. Oh, yeah, salty. Y'all like salt? Is salt good? What does it do for you? Mm, about everything's got salt in it. Did you know that? Do you know that you was created a lot like the earth? Oh, well. All right. Well, hello, everybody. We're getting ready to get started. No, I'm not going to do Ephesians this Sunday. Honestly, I'm impressed. I'm impressed. When they called me and said, Pastor, church will be at 1015. We're just going to do one service. I said, fine. I actually didn't even think they would do a service. And then I thought, well, that's fine. I'll go do it. But you know what? I bet you it'll just be the cameraman and myself. And so I show up, and I am impressed that during Florence, that you guys, you're the ones that are not afraid that you're going to melt. As a matter of fact, you proved this morning you can't melt because you did come out in this mess, and you're still here. And all those folks that were scared they were going to melt, they probably don't know they wouldn't have either. They stayed home because they thought they would melt. Anyway, I'm just picking. Thank y'all for coming. It makes it a joy. 
But I had a sermon prepared for this morning for the internet because I didn't think you would be here. So do y'all mind listening to it? I would appreciate it. And the camera probably can't see y'all, so every once in a while I say something so people really think I'm talking to people. Will y'all help me? Have you ever watched one of our programs online it looks like I'm talking to nobody? Oh, well. Okay, y'all funny. But I'm going to have a good time this morning because this, this is a biblical truth, and it's about all of us, and it's a salty subject. So why don't we just name it, You're the Salt. Amen. There's not enough time really to ever get into stuff about salt, but there is enough time for your thinking to really get provoked. Let's go to Matthew into chapter 5, and we'll start out there. And uh, we got it on the screen. You guys are getting so used to just about bad as I am. I used to read mine sitting here looking, and now I'm getting like you guys. I, if you don't throw it up there, I'm not looking. So we're getting bl- I tell you, in America, aren't we something? Man, in the Amazon jungle, they're sharing pages of Bible all through the jungles. In America, we sit around with technology, and I just I don't sit down. I just tell mine, I'll be riding it. I'll just pick it up, and I'll say, read Ephesians chapter 4, and put it in my shirt pocket. And my Bible just starts reading to me. And just while I'm, while I'm going, then it'll ring, get interrupted. Uh-huh. Every time you get good in Ephesians, somebody's going to call you. Hello. So we just get on with it. So he says very simply, He's, Jesus, you are the salt of the earth. He said, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? I could stop right there and talk about salt for a while on seasoning, just on food. Do y'all like salt? You want a little lesson on salt? You might, well, it ain't got anything to do with the Bible. Well, I'm sure I can find a verse in there to squeeze it in there for you. Let me tell you something about salt. Salt is the biggest misunderstood subject in all of the medical world. Most of you, if you've had any medical problems, like a stroke or or bad heart or something, probably the first thing they did was take you off your salt and put you on imitation salt, and I could go on and on and on and on. There's a book called The Truth About Salt, and that book has every doctor, and every scientist that did every experiment on salt. As soon as you start reading that book, it will tell you everything you know about salt. Everything. Throw it out the window and forget it. Because the past 25 and 30 years, the subject on salt has changed so dramatically that what it was then is not what it is today because of understanding. Can I get an amen? So, how is salt good for you? Salt is loaded with enzymes that give you, enzymes go into your body and search out bad stuff and kill it. Enzymes are awesome, and salt's loaded with it. Well, if you take raw salt, and you just shake it on your food, and you eat that salt, you will begin to have a natural form creating in your body called hardening of the arteries. Plaque will be, you'll just, but, Now, this is going to blow you away, especially if you've been to a doctor and they've taken you off all your salt. Now, I read this book about 15 years ago, and it changed my whole life on salt. And that's the reason there's certain restaurants I eat at, because they do season the food. Unseasoned food is more dangerous for you than seasoned food. Matter of fact, watch this. If you've been taken off salt and put on imitation salt, that book says... You're in more jeopardy, and you're in more serious trouble than you were. You should have just stayed like you were. Isn't that a shock? People, well, I don't know about it because they're telling me to get off, and you tell me I'm getting off. I'm not telling you anything. I'm saying, listen. Just listen. When, when salt is boiled in water, when it's cooked in food, when it gets to 350 degrees, it demetabolizes by itself in the food. When you put it in your body, Before it does that, it starts destroying your body. So you can either hurt yourself with it or you can get strength and energy from it. All right, now, a good while back, they diagnosed me with an AFib. I don't know how many of you know what that is, but that's when about a third of your heart's not working and and it's it's big risk for stroke. It's a real big bummer. And the the only way you can fix it is, is an ablation, and that's called an open heart surgery without opening your heart. They go up in you. And they go to where the damage is, and they start relocating stuff and burning it and doing some reconstruction in your heart. And if it works, 
then the electrical circuit in your heart will start to jump again, and it'll make that part of your heart beat, and then you're back to a normal 100% heart. But if that works, well, most people that have those problems, they take them off their salt. And your salt's what gives you the enzyme and all the efficiency you need for your heart to be strong. So if you're off of salt, just learn to eat it cooked, which, by the way, I think makes food awesome. Has anybody ever had grits with no salt? I can tell you where to go. Cracker Barrel, Waffle House, the Wobble House, and all them other houses. They have no salt. I actually ask every time if I ever go in, which is rare, I, I, I'll say, are your grits seasoned? Mm -mm. Bye. Oh, wait, you can shake it on there. Bye-bye. Because I've learned about shake. Every blue moon I will, but it's very rare. Sometimes on popcorn, something like that. I hardly ever eat raw salt. Oh, Pastor, I thought you was going to preach the word. Well, hang in there. You'll get a word. Just a minute. You want a word? I'll give you one. Salt. Now, as we begin to look into this and get into it, that's just the natural stuff about salt. The Bible says first the natural. First the natural. And then the, everything in the natural is supposed to show you what's going on in the spiritual. That's what Jesus said. He come walking up. He said, y'all all the time talking about when's the end, when's the time. He said, you look up at the sky and see it's red and you know it's going to rain. And they go, uh-huh. He said, well, don't you get it? Huh? Oh, well. Let me move on. You are the salt. You're the flavor. You're what preserves. you what holds. You're the salt of the earth, planet earth. But if the salt loses flavor, how shall it be seasoned? Oh, it's then good for what? Yeah, Cracker Barrel, Waffle House. That's where you get that kind of stuff. There is no salt. Sorry, Cracker Barrel. I love your other food, though. So it says right here, it is then good for nothing. You ever heard that word, good for nothing? But to be thrown out. Oh, it is good for something. If you need something to throw out, here. Trampled underfoot by men. Boy, if that, man, just for the heck of it, go to the next verse there. You, and this isn't in my part, okay? You, not only salt, but you're salt and light. Salt and light. You what people taste and you what people see. All right, you are the light of the world. Where's the world located? On the surface of where the salt was made for. Salt of the earth, and you're the light of the world. Your foundation is salt, and it reveals the whole world. It shows it all. You are the light of the world. It's a city. You are a city, and you can't be hid. You can't be hit. It might sound funny to you, old story, but when I jumped up on that crane at Duke Power in 1977, when that whistle went off and the Holy Spirit jumped on me, didn't plan it, didn't it? Just jumped up, started doing it. That was a Holy Ghost moment. And all of a sudden, something salty happened in my life, and I didn't know how to explain it. And I had no idea that I was on that crane just shaking salt everywhere and shooting beams of light everywhere. Didn't even think about it. Thinking about just like most Christians do, you know, you're going to hope somebody gets saved today and they quit smoking and they quit their drinking and they quit their cussing. Amen. Well, I wish that for everybody. Unfortunately, the gospel seems to be saturated around subjects like that. And people have no idea the truth of the gospel isn't just for some alcoholic or a drug addict. It's for the kings. It's for the presidents. It's for those in authority. It's for those that walk upright. Those that are righteous. It's for the, all of that. It's for them. It's, the Bible's not for mean, bad people. The Bible is a book of direction and correction. And you don't want to get messed up and think that the correction was rejection. God rejects no one. He accepts us. He's already paid the price for you. How can he reject you? You already paid for. How about this one? If you just came here and you've never accepted Christ, you're still saved. How can I be saved if I'm on my way to hell? Because he saved you. Well, then why am I going to hell? Because you haven't accepted the gift of salvation. And until you do, you're heading where you're going without it. Are you all right? Well, anyway, that's what he says here. Now, 
in Matthew, when he's talking about salt and light, he is just so simple. He didn't elaborate. If we go and study light and we study the word salt, we find a lot more about it. But don't you know them listening in their day, 2,000 years ago, there's something prophetic coming out of his mouth. You are salt. I don't know if you know it or not, but Mr. Morton himself is the one that was talking to him. That's humor. Morton salt, when it rains, it pours. Jesus, I called him Mr. Morton. Okay. I was trying to make a point that salt himself said, you are salt of the earth. And when it rains, when the anointing is moving, it pours. That's you and I. All right. Now, if you would, let's go to Mark chapter 9, and let's look at verse 49. And I, I think you're going to like it for everyone. And what's this? For everyone might be seated. Should be? No. For everyone will be seasoned with what? What do y'all cook with anyway? Amen. Don't forget, Clarice taught us well. The same fire that cooked your breakfast, burn your house down, is how you handle it. Everyone will be seasoned with fire. Does anybody know what that fire is? Well, according to the scripture, is a spoken word, but we'll figure it out later. For everyone that will be seasoned with the word, the spoken word, fire, the word is a fire. You remember the Bible says, for my word is a fire likened unto a fire? All right. For everyone will be seasoned with my word. Every sacrifice will be seasoned with salt. Every sacrifice is preserved. Every sacrifice from y'all to me, saith the Lord, it's salty. I like my stuff with salt. I'm just like God. I go to Nisi G's and have breakfast just because they cook their food with salt. I don't have to add any. I sit down and I load it down with black pepper. I mean, people will stop and look. They think that I messed up. And then when I get through, I put the top back on it. And then I shake a little more. And then I mix it all up. Everybody, it takes me a while. And then when I get through, I got this mushy pile of grits and some toast. That's all I care about. Meat's okay, but that's the baby. And I can eat those grits and eggs every day. I can have them for supper. I think I could eat grits and eggs every meal. How would you do that? I don't know. It's like the Word. I get the Word every time I get in it. It's the same book, but it just tastes better and better. It keeps getting more seasoned, more seasoned. Are you hearing where I'm coming from? Now, we're going to go somewhere. Hang on. For everyone will be seasoned with fire. See, the world will season you up. How you taste? How you taste to your friends on the job? Are you, are you one of them when you walk up to a co-worker that's been depressed and hurting and living a little rough life? You can smell a little alcohol on them. You can, all this other stuff. Are you one of them that just lets them know they need God or they're going to hell? Are you one of them that lets them know you care about them, you like to pray for them, minister to them, and share the Lord with them? And the next thing you know, they want what you got. But nobody wants what you got when you're staring down your old bony nose at them, and you think you're better than them, and you're letting them know, you know, if you change your ways, things would be different. You're just going to go to hell like you are. You know, they kind of look at you like, have you got something to say to me? People are looking for salt. Are you hearing me? Not vinegar. People are looking. They don't even know they're not seasoned. They have no idea that they're like the grits at Cracker Barrel. If something's not added to it, there's nothing to it. And that when you get God's word, the additions have already been made. When you eat it, it's already salted. Now listen, the enzymes and everything you need is in the salt. And when you eat the salt, everything you need from the salt, your body gets it. Same thing with the word. He said you're the salt. He said you're the light. He's the light of the world, so you're the light. He's the salt of the whole earth. You're the salt of the earth. As he is, the Bible says, so are we. Where? In this world. Now that's heavy, but that depends on what your revelation of who he is is. As he is, so are we. The reason some people can't get that, because the as he is, he's really not like that. It's just in their mind that's where he's at. So they can't go there. 
But you get this word in your mind. Get the mind of Christ. And then you can go where God is because God always comes where you are when you are on your way to him. And by the way, he's not big on coming down to your level. He says, come up hither. Come up hither. I will show you what's going to happen. Come here. Come. So if we're willing to make an elevation up, God is more than willing to show you what's out there. When I was in the military, we did forward observing. In my last two months, we did a, a thing called Masters, experiment in combat, 12 hours and out 12 hours, rotating. And so I was on the edge of these mountains looking with binoculars in these fields trying to find the enemy. And even though it was a war game, it looks pretty real because I can call it in and I can send the bombs and do the whole deal. And so while we're up there, I'm observing. And while I'm observing, I'm looking. I notice that the people that I'm with, they're not seeing anything. And I'm going, man, there's a tank, there's a tank, and there's a tank. And they're like, how do you know? Well, it was just three years of doing it. Now I'm with new guys. Well, doing it as much as I've done it, when I see what I saw that far away in camo, I know that that's not natural terrain. That's got to be the enemy. That's probably a tank net. And it's just stuff like that, and just doing that. And so then I call in to say, and here the stuff comes. Boom, 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 boom. It's called forward observing. Somebody goes out in front of you, observes the whole combat situation, and anything needed, they send that in first way before I ever send a troop. How much more do you think God takes care of the army of God when it's time for us to go? He is the forward observer. He is already out there, and he's already said, there's one, there's one, and there. He's already called in. He's not going to send you out there until all your help has done his job. we got to understand, when we go out of those doors, he's got it ready for you. You just got to know where those, we where those enemies are, where those weapons are at. They're planted out there, camouflaged, waiting on you. And you have to have the wisdom to recognize them and nail them. Are you okay? Everyone's going to be seasoned with fire. And every sacrifice will be seasoned with salt. Good next verse. I love this. Salt's good. Now, here's where we're getting ready to get into something. That's what I've kind of been waiting on. Salt's good. But, conjunction. We're not finished. If the salt loses its flavor, how will... You season it. Have salt in yourself. Now watch. Notice after he said have salt in yourself, what did he say? Have peace with one another. The more you study the scriptures on salt, the more you can find out salt relates to peace and the word grace. Peace and grace are the seasoning for your spiritual food. You, in the natural, do you like seasoned food? Now listen, y'all might think I'm joking, but I do love to cook. They say I cook good, I don't know, but I do know this. I love the way I cook for me. And while we've been going through some stuff, some of y'all been bringing us some food, and it has been so good. And I'm not saying who's and what's and what, but when I taste something, and I go, hmm, I know what that needs. I don't say they didn't fix it like I fixed it. I just take what they did, do a little what I do, and it's a knockout. I'm serious. Any, how many of you in here have ever had one of my steaks that I cook? Have you? You have? They're not like anybody. You've never had one like that. Never. It's the way I can cook them. Well, that's the way I feel when I eat at the Lord's table. They nobody can cook. Like he can. But you know who he cooks it for? Himself, like I do. I was cooking for me. You know why you like my food? Because it tastes the way I like it. And when you come to my house and I say, here, I fix it, I fix it the way I like it, and I'm going to put it in your plate. And when you go, oh, you put salt in it. I can't have salt. Oh, well, I've got good news for you. You're at my house. This has been cooked in it. You can eat it now and live and not die. And even be healthier. Yeah, but they told me to never touch it again. I know. They were just wrong. But they were medical. I know. They had a pole with two wings on it and a snake wrapped around it. I know. Moses had one. Matter of fact, that's where that came from. 
God told Moses, go put a pole up, put a snake on it, and if you get bit, you'll get healed, if you'll look at it and believe. And to this day, medical science likes to wear that pole with the healing wings on it, with the snake. The snake stands for sickness and disease. And the wings stand for healing. And the pole is the standard for God. Oh, well, let me just move on. Salt is good. But if salt loses its flavor, this is what gets me. This is what I'm getting to. I don't even know if you're hearing me yet. Loses flavor? Loses flavor. We've read a lot of stuff and done a lot of thinking, but now hold it. If the salt, which is good, but if it loses flavor, how are you going to season it? How do you get the flavor back in salt? How are you going to season anything? So you do what? He says, have salt in yourself and have peace. The people that live in peace and that do not have drama, they have a salty life. The people that have a lot of drama all the time, no salt. No salt. Honestly, the only drama I have, I'm not kidding you, I have in my life is, is a friend or a family member that comes and brings it to me. It's not that, when you come to my house, it's not there. There's no cussing. There's no arguing. It's just not. We don't, let, we don't need it. We don't want it. We don't deal with it. We have something to deal with. We sit at the table and we talk. We don't stand up and scream and holler. Who put the blanket in the window? I told you not to are you serious? I mean, are you serious? You need a whooping. Grace, be peaceful. Listen before you get mad and start doing stuff. Did you know the Bible says that a soft answer will turn away wrath? All right, let's reverse it. Did you know that a sharp answer back will fuel wrath? Did you know when somebody goes, blah, 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 to you and you go, blah, blah, blah. Here, let me put some gas on that. Now try it again. Kaboom. But when they come up to you, da, 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 and you don't, you don't respond to that, they immediately have nowhere to go. They have to start calming down, and they don't know what to do, and you just stand there and you be cool. Oh, yeah, your insides is, I want to peel your flesh off till I see bones. But no, 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 no. Don't move by how you feel. You move by what the Word says. You do what God said do. And when you do what He said do, you'll see His results. Amen. So he said, have peace. But he said, if the salt's lost its flavor, that's what's weird. How many of you in here have ever tasted salt and it wasn't good? Yeah, y'all might not know it. Maybe you haven't ever had any bad salt. But just yesterday, my daughter and I were cooking. And we looked at each other when we tasted something. I said, I know I seasoned it. And it was a Korean barbecue. I can make good Korean food. I was on the DMZ, so I can make barbecue. And so the next thing I, I find out is, oh, the seasoning, the salt we used, it didn't have any flavor. It was salty, but it didn't have that salty flavor. It was more like a something old, like something that just shouldn't have been put in, the food was put in it. It's still edible, but not enjoyable. Okay? That was just simply having salt not sealed, not covered, and let the world get to it, and it will kill its flavor. And when it's time to use it, and you put it in, it does nothing. So if the salt, which is good, salt's good, but if the sauce lost its flavor, how, how are you going to season anything? If you came to church 30 years ago and got excited about God and your mouth got salty and you went out salting the earth and then something happened and you got a little ill and bitter and kept quiet, hardly ever come to church, hardly ever do this. Hardly, have you ever noticed you're not salty? You don't taste salty anymore. And that's what he's talking about. You got to have salt. And you'll say, you, you're the shaker, and you're the one that's also got to fill it up. You're not just the shaker. You're the one that's got to fill the salt up. We can't go out and give it out in the world if it doesn't taste good. And believe me, there's a lot of people out there tasting, quote, unquote, believer salt, 
And the reason it doesn't taste good because their salt has lost its flavor. Now hold it. Do you know what the flavor is? We just, I said it while ago, see if you remember. Yes, I heard it. What was the other one? Grace. Peace and grace. When you lose peace and when you lose grace, your salt has lost its flavor. And it's good for nothing. I'm bad English, but King Jimmy. So he says, how will you season it? How? And then he answers it. He tells you exactly how you're going to do it. He said, now how are you going to season it? Have salt in yourself. Have it in yourself. See, we want somebody else to do it. You don't know how many times my phone rang. Pastor Larry, get over here and pray for this person. Pastor Larry, we need you. Pastor Larry, Pat, and I'm like, what do you need me for? Well, we want to cast the devil out. I can't do anything different than you can. I'm just like you. Bleed like you. Holler oi like you. Brush my teeth. Hello. Take a shower. If I don't, I'll stink. Cast him out. But, 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 but how? You say, come out. You need a lesson? I'll give you one. Everybody say, come out. come out. Now you know how to cast out devils. And now you take that whole entire lesson and go and jump on a devil and watch how well you've been schooled will work. Because when you say come out, he will come out. If you mean it and you're walking in faith and you're in God's word, there's not a devil in hell or heaven or earth that can stand to God's word coming out of your mouth. When his word comes out of your mouth, it's just like his word's coming out of his mouth. Why? Because it's his words. They're not yours. They're not. The Bible says, I live by the faith of the Son of God. It didn't say, I live by Larry's faith. I live by the faith of the Son of God. I live by his words, what he said, what he believed, what he did. He said, do what I do. I do what I see my father do. I say what I hear my father say. You do what you see me do. You say what you hear me say. That's the thing. That's the whole way it works. He's the father in the father. The father's revealed it to the son. The son's revealed it to the bride. And the bride is the mother of the church. And the mother feeds the babies. It's true. Somebody had a vision of my wife getting a miraculous healing. And in the vision, in the vision, it was Easter. And it was a beautiful resurrection morning. And the church was full of women and children everywhere. And Pastor Kathy was in here preaching a message. <laughs> she was in here preaching a message called, Don't Give Up. And she was looking good and she was in here preaching. And the place was packed and there was women and children everywhere. Couldn't see any men. So... Got Clarice, Mother Clarice, man, give me some wisdom. You're great on this. And Jerisha Barnes that had that first dream. Others of you have had dreams, same dreams. When she had it, she was dreaming the dream. And while she was dreaming the dream, she started dreaming in the dream. In other words, she would, had a dream while she was dreaming. I've done that. Have you ever done that? Well, when you have a dream, when you're dreaming... That's the power of agreement. You're never going to get another way to show you that what you're dreaming, you better pay attention to it. Because God speaks to us in dreams and in visions. I've had dreams and got up and walk them out the very next morning. Every bit, I've, I stood at a crane and told my operator what was just getting ready to happen and he laughed at me. And it happened. And he said, how did you know? I said, God showed me that was going to happen last night. And when I seen that big deal coming down, I remembered the dream. And I said, when it gets down here, it's going to crash. And I said, I dreamed it, saw it, and watched it. God will have, and by the way, that's where we were supposed to be and we didn't go. I drive that big old crane. Hello. I, there's only two of them in the whole world that they made. Manitowoc made two 18-wheeler cranes. A crane on the 18 wheels. You've seen them big cranes on tracks. They put it on an 18-wheeler with 170 foot of boom and me driving that big old thing. You ought to see me coming down the road with 170 foot of boom in it. <clears throat> Are y'all okay? I'm trying to go somewhere with you guys, and I don't even know if you're getting it. But, man, there's something about every time I talk about Duke Power and all that, that's where all the salt and stuff in my life started manifesting. I didn't even know what was going on. 
born again, love God, all I know I'm going to heaven. I don't understand much in the Bible. I just start reading stuff. Hey, if you lay hands on the sick, they'll get better. I should never heard nothing like that. Ain't that something? And then, you know, you go talk to your believers. Oh, that's passed away. Have you ever heard that? Oh, that's not for today. Don't you wish you had a Bible that you didn't mind tearing pages out of so you could say, what's not for today? And every time they show you, you just rip it and say, we don't need that. It, you know, just to provoke people's thinking to say, well, if you don't need it, don't read it. Well, how about this? If you don't need it, don't eat it. But I need it. I got to eat it. So, all right. <laughs> Let's run over to Luke real quick. I'm, time's moving on. Let's go to 14. Let's go to verse 34. Salt's good. But if it's lost its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? Next one. How shall it be seasoned? Next verse. There you go. It is neither fit for the land uh -oh, or the bathroom. Dunghill, that's commode. Can everybody say commode? Okay, I'm sorry. Toilet. All right. Manual. That's Korean for bathroom. So, it is neither fit for the land nor for the dunghill. Well, what's a good part? Men throw it out. He who has ears. What does that mean? If you have ears. He who has the ability to demand undivided attention. He who has ears means people who will tell people around them, shh, I want to get this. Shh, stop. That's what that ears to hear. That's an ear to hear. But when he says, those of you have ears to hear, and you turn to somebody and say, where are we going when this is over? You didn't have an ear to hear. That's, that's, I'm not being mean. We all done that. That's how I know. <laughs> okay. So he says, <clears throat> he says, throw it out. And he who has the ears, let him hear. Go to the next verse here. As a matter of fact, just go ahead and just go on to Colossians. I'm gonna, I want to hit Colossians here. Go to Colossians chapter 4, verse 6. I'm, I'm going to enjoy this right here. This is going to be pretty good. Y'all okay? I want you to look and see how he begins to show in the next couple of books as I begin to close here. And there you go home so you'll feel better and listen to the last few words I'm saying. <laughs> uh, he said, are you all right out there? Let your speech, okay, your salt shaker, let your speech always be with grace. That's the flavor of salt. Seasoned with salt that you may know how you ought to answer each one. If we ever get a hold of the reality of how powerful God's word is, he relates it to so many things. I mean, he keeps telling you the kingdom of God is likened unto. And he gives you so many illustrations, and every single one of them, the end result of the illustration is, that was in you. In, in you. See, we don't hear that a lot. We hear the illustration, and we keep it out of us. It's out there. That's what the mystery of the gospel was all about. As long as it was out here, it was okay. But when the revelation knowledge of the mystery of the gospel was the Messiah himself is in you, it was, whoa! That's why the Bible says that the, the devils, had they known that, they'd have never crucified him. They would have never been a cross. You'd never know a symbol of a cross. You wouldn't even know what it means. That devil would have said, we ain't crucifying him. You crucify that one Christ and they'll multiply. They'll turn into millions of them and they'll be all over the earth. That's the truth. That's what they were saying. And Jesus showed up, and he pulled it off. They crucified him. And why? I don't have time to get into it, but I'll make it simple for you. Because according to God's laws, you cannot come into this earth and be legal to do anything unless you come through the womb of a woman. Anything in the earth out of the womb of a woman is an alien. Christ came through the womb of a woman, by the word of the Lord and the blood of God, and when he come through that womb of that woman, Satan never realized one thing, that the nature of sin that is in the blood came from Adam, not God. And from Adam on, the nature of sins in every person born. But once you get to Christ, 
that sin nature gets cut off. It's called circumcision. It's cut off by blood. And when that's cut off, then from there on is a whole new world, a whole new life. Now, old things are passed away, been cut off, and all things have become new. Now, if you're not careful, you're going to remember every bit of that and drag it over here in your new, ha, ah, and now you got your new, but just really isn't what it should be because you ain't really, you remember, you ain't really nothing but an old sinner. You, you remember what you did. You ain't nothing, you old scumbag. You know what you did. Well, sinners, you know you're a sinner. You got to sin. We're going to sin. That's called a sin conscience. And if you act like that and you talk like that, it, you're not reading the word about salt being in you. That's not salt coming out. You don't, that's that other word, that toilet thing. Anyway, y'all figure it out. So, he makes it real clear. Season with salt that you may know how you ought to answer. Have you ever really given thought to that? Do you really give thought to how you answer people before you answer? Boy, if we could all learn to pause. I've got a relative that makes me think of you. Looks like you, acts like you, and has my brother's name. His name's Charlie. But when you ask him a question, you better be ready to wait. One thing about Larry Sizer, if you ask him a question, does he answer you like that? What do y'all usually say about him? Larry's slow about answering you. Not really. I know what Larry's doing. Larry's processing. Larry's thinking. And by the time he says what he's going to say, he don't have to take anything back. I've never heard him say, that ain't what I meant. I know exactly what he means. Now, a lot of us go around and say, you ask Larry, I tease him. Larry, come up and, and tell him something. And while he's coming, let me make a few announcements. You know, get cutting up because I love him. I wouldn't do that if I didn't love him. But it's because the man is honest, he's true, and he listens, and he doesn't jump real quick when he hears something, he thinks about it. Danny's like that. Edward, I don't know if it's a size or thing or what. I'll say this about all three of them. They really don't have but two speeds. And if you don't like their first one, all right, you ain't going to like nothing at all. But it's true. People, people my, my nephew's like that. You can ask Charlie a question, and he'll stare at you, and you'll think, did he hear me? Is he going to answer? And right when you're ready to start talking, that's when he'll start talking. And you're ready to just interrupt him, and he'll hush and listen to you again. Then you've got to wait for him to crank back up and do it again. So the best thing to do when you ask a question, just listen and wait. And, then he, and when he answers you, it's so awesome. I've noticed that people that wait to talk have something to say. And I've also learned that people that write on bathroom walls, do you know why they write on bathroom walls? Because they don't have anything to say. So, let's go to Colossians. Four, seven, we did. James, I'm going to close with James 3. I know that makes you feel better. I know you're scared you ain't going to get out of here before the Baptists do. I love it. I love it. How many of you like figs? Yeah. All right. Well, can a fig tree, my brother, can it bear olives? How many of you like olives? I got a pizza for you you can have. All right. Amen. Give me the meat. You can have dollars. Can a fig tree, my brother, bear olives? What a question. Doesn't that make you want to go, now you just know it can't. Why would you even ask? Well, there must be a reason. He says, are grapevine bear figs? Thus, no spring yields both salt water and fresh. See, the Bible talks in Ephesians 4 and 29, that we should let no corrupt communication come out of our mouth, but only that which is good for the use of edifying, that it ministers salt to the hearer. Grace is salt. When you show up in people's lives and you salt it, a little bit of it, when you leave, it, it seasons. It seasons. Just going in a restaurant and eating and cutting up and praying over your food and teasing, Every once in a while where I go, it's funny how somebody will come and just interrupt and sit down and they'll say, I noticed you prayed. I eat here and I see you come in and I noticed this and I noticed that. Would, would you pray for me? Would you? I mean, I'm serious. I've had people just come to my table and I just sit and they just, it's like God just brings them to me. I'm having my breakfast and I'm ministering to people and I get through and I just go. But people watch you. 
And when I go to pay, I have things to say. When I walk by people, I have things to say. I intentionally think to myself, everybody I speak to today, I honestly have a great desire to leave you smiling or feeling better about yourself than I did before I saw you. If I can do anything like that, that's wonderful. If I can stay neutral, that's wonderful. But if I pull you back or pull you down or give you anything to struggle, that is not part of my ministry and that's not part of my mission. My ministry and mission that God's given me is edifying. The Bible says that the five-fold ministry was given to edify the body of Christ, to equip them, to go do the work. See, we think God gave us pastors to go do our work. But no, God gave you pastors to tell you to go do it. Well, if you tell us, we'll fire you. Well, who are you going to hire to tell you to go fire you? Are you crazy? Go do the word. See what I'm saying? How can you see what I'm saying? It's invisible. You see what I'm saying by what? Revelation. And if you can't see it by a revelation, you're, ne you're never going to see it at all. Amen? So, are we going to walk through this earth? With fresh and bitter. How can it bitter and fresh? Well, that's easy. You go to church and you praise God. You go home and cuss somebody. Well, I'm being real serious. How do you do that? Well, you, over here, you at Dillard shopping and you're so sweet and ministered to that person. And then you went over to this section and somebody didn't treat you just right. You let know by God how you feel about it. Mm hmm. You know, you were salty over here. And now, it's ugh, fresh water over here. Hello? You can't have fresh water and salt water coming out of the same fountain. Either one or the other. And God said, I want you to be salt. I want you to be salt. I don't want no corrupt communication coming out of your mouth. Only that which is good for the use of edifying. What? And it brings grace to the salt to the faith comes by. You know, it's what we say matters so much. What we say either builds people up or cuts them down. It does. And I love to build people up. And you can do it. Waitresses, I love it. I'm, I'm going to tell on art. We sit at a table, and there was a bunch of preachers. And then preachers uh, was eating. In the way, and I'm funny. I think if you go out and eat, I'm wondering you should be tipping if you got a waiter. A waiter. And if you're not going to tip generously and tip, you go to Hardee's. They don't charge tips. You go anywhere you want to. But don't you go and sit at a table, and somebody come, I am your server. You know what they said? I work for you, and I hope you pay well. Hello. So, your server, when they come, tip them. Art, he watched them preachers, and a few of them laid a buck down. They made the biggest mess. You ought to have seen it. And them ladies came in, and they started busting that table. It must have been 15 preachers. And we sit there, we counted the money, and I think they might have got $10 tip out of that whole entire. They should have got $10 a preacher. And I sit there and looked at that. I looked at Art and I said, do you believe that? I said, all them preachers. Now, that's the taste that ministers are leaving to the people that serve them. They're letting them know how great God is to them. God's so good to me, I'm going to eat a $12 breakfast and I'm going to give you 25 cents. Man of God. Art just reached out there and pulled a $20 bill out and just threw it on the table. A little bit later, the like, girls come by and they bust... They just so excited. Can you believe them preachers did that? They were so excited. They were all jacked up. They thought them preachers was the greatest guys in the world to leave a twenty dollar bill. So when I was paying and going out, you know, I looked over that girl that was just a grinning, and I said, I said, you really enjoyed waiting on them preachers, didn't you? She said, Yeah, they, they left a good tip. I said, Well, I, I hate to be the one to tell you. I said, They didn't leave you that. I said, That fellow over there put that on there. She said, What? I said, he watched them preachers get up and leave, and he didn't like it. He said, that ain't right, so he went and put money on the table for you. She said, what? Well, you might not like this, but we put a little salt. Art put a little salt in her life. Because they was looking at a few bucks tip, hello. And a $20 tip's a whole lot better than a $10 tip. Can you get an amen? But when you go out of here today, and you're ministering to your family and the people in your life, some of them you've got to have tough love. Some of them you got to go, I'm sorry. If you're not going to change, you know, here at this house, that's not welcome under this roof. And then again, some of you got to go home and say, I understand you've been struggling. I haven't been handling it well. I want you to forgive me. I'm praying and asking God to help me help you through this. We're going to get through this in Jesus' name. Let's pray. When you pray, 
you'll find out you never argue with people you pray with. I ain't kidding you. Ask people that come together and pray. Never hear them argue. Just the power of prayer. The power of agreement. Getting in secret and visibly saying something. Turning around in the faith and the patience of God. Then your eyes watch it happen. You said it and you believed it. You acted on it. And now you see it manifesting, coming around. I wish I had time to tell you all about that dream. Because that dream that Jerisha had about Kathy with the double anointing and all. Uh, Clarice said... The reason that it was all women and children is because the church is the mother. And the church produces children and feeds the children. And, and the church is a woman. I, I mean, to God. I know we men, we like our hairy chest and we like, we will, <clears throat> let be macho. But to God, you're his bride. Just deal with it, would you? You're his woman. And don't get too smart with him, he'll get you pregnant. Yeah, and you might have twins. Double, Hello. How do you get pregnant by God? Get in his word, and all of a sudden it'll start percolating in you. And like Mary and Elizabeth, when they run into each other, and she said, Whoa, hey, I have conceived in my womb this holy thing. And John the Baptist was about six months old in her womb, and he did a flip. First Baptist ever did a flip. He said, whoop, in the womb. It's called bearing witness. And when, when Elizabeth, carrying John the Baptist, heard... Mary say, I have conceived Christ. John himself said, glory to God in the womb. I mean, did a jump over the umbilical cord. Some, that's what happens in us when we meet each other and we start talking and praying about God and different things. That's that inside spirit of what's in us of God doing that leap, bearing that witness. That's why when two people come together in the Word, that's what that excitement is. It's the babe Christ in you. It's the leaping for joy and ready to come out and manifest in the world. Can I get an amen out there? I'm telling you, you're more salty than you know you are. Oh, baby, all you need is just be putting some water and boil a while. Get in the Word and meditate. That's the water and let it boil. And just and begin to just demetabolize right there. And then when you do that, you're going to be good for everybody you run into. Because you're not going to give them a little bit of salt and a little bit of fresh. You're going to be salty. You're going to be like Nisi G's grits. Anybody take a bite of these, they're going to know. They got salt and butter. Can I get amen? I want to pastor a nice salty church. I don't want no one flavored blah. Cracker barrel grit church. Hallelujah. Wait do you taste my grits the way I like it. You'll love them because I make the best grits in the world. Do y'all know what grits are? What, what are grits? Are you sure it's corn? Are you positive? The more I ask you, the less sure you are. Well, I'm going to just tell you right now, you're right. Y'all funny. Y'all are funny. Stand up on your feet with me. Now, it's raining, and there's going to be a lot of stuff going on. You're going to watch the news. You're going to hear news. You're going to see news. And we're going to be a part, even at home and in our cars, anywhere we go, we're going to be a part of speaking to Florence and continually. Hey, listen, I don't know if y'all realize how supernatural that was to go from the category that it was. The, and my uncle preacher saying, by the time it gets to Myrtle Beach, it probably won't even be a one. Now, him there saying that. But then again, I understand it hit some places and water's still coming. But church, I'm telling you, it could have been a major catastrophe. I believe that the church of the Lord Jesus Christ stood all over the earth, not just in America, and prayed. And I believe the Spirit of God did what he did. I believe there was a seriously number five tsunami coming to this country. And what's wild, I guess whose state it was coming through? Ours. I mean, it's piddling, going through Columbia and going right on up. We are a blessed people. We the head and not the tail, above only and never beneath. And God ain't brought us this far to turn back. Amen? Amen. And Father, we thank you that every person right now that is struggling, stranded, hurting, maybe even lost in that storm, I thank you for their protection. And I ask you to grace every volunteer. I thank you that I live in a country that men and women grab their boats and drive from one state to another state. Don't even know who they're going to help. they just going to help. That's the country that I live in. And I recognize, Father, the goodness of my nation. And I thank you for America today. And God, I ask you to bless 
our president and give him wisdom and strength. I ask you to move through him. Your word says to pray that. Your word says if we don't lift him up, well, then we're just setting for our own destruction. So I thank you that I can ask you to finger with his heart. And regardless of people's opinions of any president, my God listens to our prayers and he moves by his words and not by the words of a president but by the words of God and I call him strong Lord he got born again two months before he got saved he's a baby I pray for his wisdom and strength I ask you to open the eyes up of the people that have been lied to and don't understand what's happening I thank you you're bringing America back into a place of godliness a place where we recognize that God is first in our country and I'm talking about the Lord Jesus Christ and Lord I thank you for a new day and I pray for that supreme justice I thank you Father God for him to be nominated because you already fingered with his heart and he will do the will of God and I thank you for bringing our nation to our knees of repentance and I give you the praise for that because I know that you abundantly pardon and you abundantly forgive not just do it, you're abundantly. And I give you the praise and the glory and the honor. And now, Father, we prepare our hearts. We're preparing our hearts for revival. Like we see in this rain in the earth, we want to see that rain in the church. Father God, we want it to bust the doors down. Let the waters of God just fill up. And we love you. And I thank you for a great move of God and for these people that would come out in this weather to worship you. Oh God, every person in this building's already been noticed by the Holy Ghost that you get up on a day like this and drive to a building to worship God with other people. I'm hearing the Lord say, you might take it for granted. You might not think anything about it, but I am. I'm hearing the Lord. I'm telling you, He's so touched. He is so pleased with your presence. And you need to take that serious. And as you ride home, you just tell Him, I'm glad you as much with me here in my car as you are at church or anywhere I go. You'll never leave me and you'll never forsake me. I have a personal relationship with you. And as we go church, let's keep that personal relationship open by saying a prayer like this and you say it with me. Oh God, I ask you to cleanse my heart. Touch my mind. Forgive me for everything that's against your will from this day forward I'm not going to be the same I'm going to spend more time praying and reading I'm going to spend more time listening to your voice and I'm going to be a doer of your word and I will live and not die I will prosper and I will decree the works of the Lord in Jesus name Woo! Hey, if you meant that, turn somebody and tell them you meant it. Anchor that baby down. I love you guys, and Jesus is Lord. You need prayer? Come on down. We'll pray for you. Other than that, go salt the earth up real good. Because right now it's pretty blah. <laughs>